Well, howdy, YouTube. Unky Joe here, Unky Joe's Playhouse. Today, this episode's all about coffee. Not really. This episode is about how to take old server hardware and make it seem new again. So let's get it started right now. That's right, you heard me say it right here at Unky Joe's Playhouse. We're going to take old server equipment and make it relevant again. So how old of equipment? How about 11, 12 years old? How about an IBM Model 3650 Model 3, which is right there on the bench behind me, blinking. It's nice and quiet right now because it's not running. Uh, you will hear how loud that server gets, uh, even at full load. But uh, you're probably asking yourself, well, why, why did you pull your Model 3650 Model 3 out of your rack and set it on a workbench? Couldn't you just do all this in the rack? Yeah, I could, but then I couldn't really take... It's kind of crowded back there in the rack, and I can't take pictures of what it is I want to take pictures of. So, And besides, I have a plan. This unit is going to go to a client, and I'm going to lease them this server with software included, maintenance and whatnot, because... As, uh, you know, the unspeakable thing that has happened among all of us. We can't talk about it or we get demonetized. You know what I'm talking about. Makes uh, mobile workers more relevant these days. Uh, the client, I convinced them that instead of buying a bunch of workstations and lining them up on the floor, to let's just create some virtual machines temporarily that their remote workers can come into uh, and, you know, have plenty of capacity. And that, frankly, is what these big Dell and, and IBM servers that I have are designed to do. Well, that's one of the tasks they can do. Now, I've done a video before where I had like 15 or 20 virtual machines running on one of these units and showed that it could be done. What I'm going to do in this case is we're going to put Windows Server 2019 on here with a GUI. Uh, and we're going to set up some virtual machines, some Windows 10 virtual machines. We're going to set up a... Uh, we're going to virtualize their PBX system and put in put a virtual uh, you know image on this machine because it can handle all that. Uh, this this server has got I think it's uh, eight core, sixteen threads, so it's got two CPUs, two eight core CPUs, got forty eight gig of RAM. Uh, it has two internal spinning SATA drives. They're about one hundred and thirty or one hundred and forty gig, and they're in a mirrored pair. Uh, and that's what the operating system is installed on. And that's where I ran into some problems because my goal was just to throw a one terabyte SSD drive in here, a SATA SSD, and uh, just have that be the data partition for the virtual machines. That would negate some of the 11 years of, you know, older technology causing it to be a little bit slower. Because if you put an SSD in here and boot your virtual machines off there, they should run fast enough to keep your, you know, your users happy. But it turned out there was a problem doing that. So Sasha Lopez over at uh, Blue Telecoms in the UK donated a couple of, of one terabyte SSD drives. And I've had them in the Synology flash station for almost, you know, six, eight months. And I decided I'd take one of those out and put it in this IBM. And if it worked fine, then I would order another one and uh, put it in, uh, install it at the customer location after I got it prepped. But... I've never had a problem with this Model 3650, Model 3, other than it being loud. I think it's louder than the Dells. And suddenly I was getting, uh, after I got Windows Server installed and started creating my virtual machines on that SSD, I started to get blue screens or stability issues or it was running really slow. I just, I couldn't figure it out. So I've got an IBM Serve RAID controller card in there that, that'll do basic RAID 1 and I think RAID 5 uh, or even RAID 0. Uh, and it is a hardware controller, but I got to think it perhaps there was a problem, an issue with uh, SSDs not being supported by that controller. It is a SAS serial ATA dual controller. Uh, and I tried moving it around, tried everything I could think of. I couldn't get past the blue screens. I have two of those drives, so I tried both. They were both blue screening on me. So if I pulled the, the, SATA, or the uh, SSD drives out, and just put the images on the spinning hard drive I didn't, or on a iSCSI share, I wasn't having any issues. So I came across a video Morton did over at my playhouse, so, oh, I don't know, seven, eight months ago, and he did another one here recently 
where he got one of those PCI Express adapter cards that you could put an M2 SSD drive into, and then he just ran it off the PCI Express bus. Now, he only had a PCI Express 1, uh, yeah, uh, version 1 uh, slot to test this on, and I verified on the 3650 Model 3 that they are indeed PCI Express 2 slots. I purchased a, uh, a PCI Express adapter and an M2 uh, SSD, and suddenly my blue screens were gone, and it works great. So this is running ADA at full bore on the CPU, FPU, cache, and memory. Uh, and you can see we're at 100%. You can see our system temperatures are right about 50 degrees C, which is about good, which is normal. So the, the memory and the CPU were both being tested at 100%. So uh, other than it testing the hard drives, and there's only a couple of spinning drives in there, and then the NVMe uh, PCI Express uh, SSD drive. Uh, neither one of them are being tested right now or, or burned in, so to speak. So This is the unit under load under ADA at 100% CPU usage in all cores and all RAM in use and uh, you can hear the fans and you can see uh, it's consuming about a hundred or 220 watts total it may sound loud and I, I'm recording the fans for this very reason I want you to hear what they are my desk is about 10 feet away from uh, the server which is behind me and this is the level of noise I'm getting so probably not something you want working next to you you do want it in a server room where it gets plenty of cool air, good air circulation, and there's a nice heavy door, so you don't have to listen to the server droning on all day. Uh, but there it is under a stress test. We're going to let this run for a while, and then we'll, I'll come back and share my results with you. All right, so we're coming up on uh, 30 minutes now, and as you can see, it's still going to at 100%, still testing almost 100% of the memory, about 96%. Uh, the fans have not ramped up any higher than they are, and the temperature is stabilized right around 50 degrees C, give or, give or take a few degrees there. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop the test, and uh, it should bring it down from 100% down to next to nothing. And then after a few moments, we should hear the fans kick down in speed, because it won't be generating as much heat. And while it's doing that, I am going to go over to pictures and show you some results. So here are the read and write speeds with Crystal Dismark on that internal M2 drive. It is a PCI Gen 2 slot. I did verify that this... Uh, 3650 Model 3 supports uh, PCI Gen 2. It does. So we're getting really good read and write speeds, even on our 4K and sequential. Uh, they look really good. So those are the drive results on that NVMe. And that was the whole idea behind doing this, because originally I, I put a SSD drive in there, but I could not get it to work. It kept The server kept blue screening. And that was a SATA SSD. So I don't know whether I just have too old of a firmware on the uh, on the SAS or SATA controller. Uh, the IBM Serve RAID controller, they call it. Uh, so I just decided it would be easier. I took a little cue from Morton over at my playhouse and put an SSD in a PCI Express slot. And man, I'm glad I did. This is going to be my go-to from now on on these older servers. But those are the test results. And then here's my Cinebench 15 results of 730 CBs. 
you can see it's identified the processors correctly uh, and that's about average my last test before that was 730 as well and then my CB20 tests are 1508 points so the server is no slouch uh, and it'll be good for what I need it to do which is it's going to be a virtualization server the server seems to be working just fine and it's a uh, it's actually consuming a lot less power than I thought it would. It only consumed about 220 watts at load. Now what I didn't show you was creating virtual machines. I created a couple of Windows 10 images on there. I did a, a Linux image, you know, just cause I'm going to have the PBX is going to be running Linux. I put a Windows server on there. I put it through its tests. You've seen me do a dozen of those videos where I create virtual machines. It's kind of boring, so I didn't record that. But suffice it to say, I got lots of virtual machines on here running without any problems. And as far as I'm concerned, this thing is now past its burn-in test. i got to be careful because I'm putting a lot of eggs into one basket with this client, moving, uh, moving this in as a virtualization server without another backup server to back it up. I do have a, uh, another motherboard for this server. If anything were to happen to it, I could swap the motherboard out. Uh, and the uh, boot drives are in a mirrored pair, so if one of them were to fail, no big deal. The only thing I don't have mirrored is the uh, M2 SSD drive in here, but I'll make sure that I do regular backups using Synology. I'll, I'll have it back up the VMs every night so that if uh, it gets any changes and if there was some catastrophic failure of the M2 SSD drive, I'll still be able to uh, restore from backups. You know, this Sabrent drive, M2 drive, it comes, I mean, that is a, what, I don't know if it's plastic, it feels like metal. No, I think it's metal. It's a metal case. But you know, they took the extra time to really, you know, they're like the Apple of M2 SSD drives. You know, it came in there. It's got a nice little user's manual on it. Um, you know, for, you know, I think I paid $109 for this one terabyte M2 drive. Uh, and it is a PCI Gen, it is a PCI Gen 3. Yeah, it's a NVMe PCI Expre Express M.2 2280 SSD. High performance M2 Gen 3 by 4 solid state drive. So there you go from the from the manufacturer itself. That's a nice little case they put it in, right? It's kind of cool. If, uh, yeah, money well spent. Uh, and, you know, it's going to give new life to this server. So this server is not, you know, I, I got it a couple of years ago when I was doing all my server videos and building my rack. And uh, I got to thinking, you know, I could build... I could build the customer a unit or I could just put this unit back in service. Now, if it consumed three or 400 watts and I would rethink it, but this thing only can, consumes about 220 watts at full load. So it's not going to be really consuming that much power. We're talking in, in Texas where I live, it maybe it'll consume about $20 a month in electricity. So that's a small, you know, I can't, I can't rent a virtual server for that amount of money. So being the king of cheap does pay off sometimes. So uh, it's nice to see the server get back in into use. And now that we have a benchmark, we can compare this, this IBM to our Dell R710s. Now, I've got two more, two more of those Dell R710s. One of them has a low-power CPU in there. The other one has a higher, higher power. I think the X-Series Xeon, high, higher speed, higher power consuming CPUs in them. They're both dual CPU units. And, uh, but it'll, it'll be neat to kind of compare that. I want to do the same thing with these Dells that I'm doing with this IBM. Put a, put an M2 SSD in it and uh, see what kind of speeds we get out of it. Power consumption and noise levels. I think that would make for an interesting video, don't you? Now this also shows you the staying power of IBM slash Lenovo slash Dell slash, you know, HP. Even these old servers, they're, the newer ones are not that much better. They have they have more features. They have USB 3. They have USB uh, 3. Point, or USB C on them. Some of them, uh, they have. They can use DDR4 RAM. Uh, they can use more power efficient processors. That kind of thing. And in a data center, all that matters. But for you and me, just building our labs, I don't give a rat's ass that it's an 11 year old server as long as it does what I need it to do, and it's and it's uh, you know frugal on power, which this is. So. Uh, yeah, don't don't let these old servers scare you off. They they don't consume that much power. I mean, that's not much more than a damn gaming rig uh, uh, uses. You know, when you're playing Fortnite or something like that. So, 
So there you go, YouTube. We hope you found the video entertaining and informative as always. So please smash that like button down below and uh, leave your comments in the comments section. If you're inclined to donate, we take PayPal and Patreon. And we also uh, have the ability for you to join as a member on YouTube for only $2 a month recurring fee. Uh, and that goes right back into the channel and helps us get more products in here, get other NVMe drives to put into other servers so we can test them. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell icon so you get notified of any new videos. Please come back, see us again, tell all your friends about us, all your tech friends about us. And don't forget, we will see you on the other side.